Number 10. Bryn Forbes Imagine achieving pro basketball stardom and having it all crumble in an instant due to one bad decision. That's exactly what happened to Bryn Forbes, who was arrested in early 2023 for allegedly being violent towards his ex fiance former adult film star Elsa Jean. Forbes was taken into custody in San Antonio, Texas, on suspicion of misdemeanor assault after a verbal argument turned physical on Valentine's Day. According to a police report, the 29-year-old struck Jean repeatedly, leaving her with two black eyes and other injuries that required medical attention. An inside source told the Daily Mail that it was the first time Forbes got physical with the 26-year-old victim, who wisely decided to end their year-long engagement after the altercation. The tipster claimed that Forbes had become insecure and jealous after discovering Jean's newfound success as an OnlyFans model and podcaster. When the domestic dispute occurred, Forbes was a week away from being traded from the Minnesota Timberwolves to the Milwaukee Bucks. But the Timberwolves released him and the Bucks halted their plans to sign him on due to his criminal case. Forbes became a free agent and has not received any offer from the NBA, leading him to believe that his professional sports career is over. Within a month of his arrest, he had reportedly moved back in with his mother as he faced an uncertain future and a potential career change. In July of 2023, the domestic violence charge against Forbes was dismissed as part of a pre-trial diversion program for first-time offenders. In exchange for his guilty plea, he was allowed to avoid a conviction as long as he followed certain rules set forth by the court for a specified amount of time. The Bexar County District's Attorney Office told local station KENS5 that the outcome was granted per the victim's wishes. Forbes' legal problems might be over, but his quest for employment continues. This is despite his solid reputation as an elite three-point shooter and for helping the Bucks win the 2021 NBA Championship against Miami. Number 9. Chance Comanche Nobody would have imagined that NBA G League player Chance Comanche was plotting a murder while playing for the Stockton Kings in Las Vegas in December 2023. But that's what the 27-year-old was allegedly doing whenever he got the opportunity to use his phone, according to authorities, who are accusing Comanche of helping his ex-girlfriend kill a woman. It all began with a fight over a Rolex between Comanche's ex, 19-year-old Sakaria Harden, and 23-year-old Maria Rogers, who were both working as prostitutes. The women were also reportedly arguing because Rogers blamed Harden for implicating her boyfriend in a double murder. Prosecutors claim that Harden, Comanche, and a third suspect hashed out the details of their plan to kill Rogers. The trio allegedly tried to hire a hitman for $3,000, but could not find one forcing them to move to Plan B. They entertained different murder methods, including strangulation, poisoning, and shooting. But the group ultimately settled on luring Rogers to her death under the guise of a kinky threesome. Rogers was under the impression that she would be getting paid to fulfill a bondage fantasy. However, that was just a ploy to get her into a helpless position before she realized she was in danger. It worked, and it would only be a matter of days before Hardin and Comanche ended up in police custody as suspects in Rogers' disappearance. Comanche admitted to strangling Rogers with an HDMI cord. He claimed that he released the cord after 10 seconds, when the victim began to gasp for air. He then accused Hardin of continuing to strangle Rogers until she became unresponsive. After feeling no pulse, the suspects allegedly tossed Rogers' body into a ditch in Henderson and covered it with rocks. During his confession, Comanche identified the location of the victim's body. Both he and Harden are now facing murder charges, and Comanche's basketball career is definitely over. Number 8. Ramil Robinson To say that Ramil Robinson came from humble beginnings would be an understatement. At the tender age of just 10 years old, his grandparents sent him to the United States to join his mother, who had immigrated to the country from Jamaica when he was a toddler. Rumil's mom did not seem interested in reconnecting, leaving him on his own to survive. He slept in the hallways of apartment buildings and college dorms in Cambridge, Massachusetts, until he was taken in by local couple Helen and Lou Ford, who adopted him in 1978. The Fords provided Rumil with a comfortable life and opportunities he may not have otherwise had. His basketball talent was discovered in high school, and he went on to play in college. In 1990, he began his NBA career with the Atlanta Hawks. 
Emil played for several other teams in the coming years, including the New Jersey Jets, the Charlotte Hornets, and the Los Angeles Lakers, just to name a few. But he was not the breakout success he had likely hoped to be. Throughout his eight-year NBA career, Robinson earned around $5 million, significantly less than the league's highest paid players. He squandered it all on a lavish lifestyle, leaving him penniless and bankrupt by the time he quit playing pro in 1998. Rumiel was in such a bad position financially that he borrowed money from Helen, his adoptive mother, to start a business after he left the NBA. He claimed that he had plans in the works to open a 25,000-acre resort in Jamaica called Harmony Cove. In exchange for the loan, he promised Helen that he would cover the payments and give her half a million dollars once the project was finished. Rumiel had terrible credit due to his long-standing habit of living outside his means. He could not get approved for bank loans on his own, so he borrowed $1.2 million with help from the bank's senior loan officer, Brian Williams, who accepted large bribes to push the approval process through. The vast majority of the money left over went toward financing Rumiel's lavish lifestyle. Only 5% of the funds went toward legitimate business expenses, and Harmony Cove never came to fruition. By 2006, lenders had caught on to his shady activities, and they wanted their money back. In 2007, Helen lost her home of 40 years to foreclosure. She spent the next six years in a small apartment while she worked to get the house back. By the time Ramil and his girlfriend, Stephanie Hodge, were indicted on criminal charges in 2009, Ramil had already been slapped with civil lawsuits and a judgment against him for over half a million dollars. During one lawsuit hearing, he admitted that he only owned the clothes on his back and that he was surviving on $20 here and there. It was also revealed that he had not paid taxes since the late 1990s. In 2010, Rumiel was convicted of 11 charges, including wire fraud, bank bribery, conspiracy to commit bank fraud, and making false statements to a financial institution. He served six years in federal prison and was released in 2016. Since then, though, he has remained largely under the radar, with even the media unable to track him down for comment. Number 7. Javaris Crittenton In August 2011, 23-year-old Washington Wizards point guard Javaris Crittenton mistakenly shot a 22-year-old mother of four named Julian Jones in Atlanta, and unfortunately, the victim died during emergency surgery. According to law enforcement, Crittenton accidentally shot Jones while aiming for someone who had robbed him several months earlier. The FBI arrested him a week later in California as he attempted to board a flight to Atlanta. He maintained his innocence and was released on a $230,000 bond. In 2013, Crittenton and his cousin Douglas Gamble were indicted on 13 charges relating to Jones's death, including murder and participating in gang activity. Prosecutors claimed that Crittenton had joined the Crips back in 2007 or 2008 while playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. His intended victim, Trontavia Stevens, was a member of the rival Bloods gang. The murder case was still ongoing in early 2014 when Crittenton was arrested on drug trafficking charges. He and 13 other defendants were accused of operating a drug ring that distributed multi-kilo orders of cocaine and hundreds of pounds of marijuana. In 2015, Crittenton pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter and aggravated assault. He was sentenced to 23 years in prison, but the term was reduced to 10 years in 2023 after Crittenton struck a new deal with former district attorney Paul Howard. As part of the revised punishment, Crittenton was required to prove to Howard that he had changed his ways and that he was a good role model. The 35-year-old was released in April 2023 after serving just eight years. News of Crittenton's release came as a shock to Jones's family, who were unaware that the DA was in talks to renegotiate the convicted killer's sentence. As part of the new sentence, he is required to serve 10 years of probation. Current District Attorney Fanny Willis tried to stop the deal from going through, but a judge ruled in favor of the new sentence. The victim's loved ones were understandably outraged by the news, especially after being kept completely in the dark about it and learning about it through the news like everyone else. Number 6. Keith Damon Appling 
Keith Damon Appling's NBA career came and went with little fanfare. His time on the court was limited to playing for Orlando Magic between 2014 and 2016. In 2017, Appling was sentenced to a year in jail for a weapon-related charge and for resisting an officer. By the time he regained his freedom, his legal issues had taken him away from the basketball court for two years. He never returned to the NBA and instead went on to play for teams based in the Dominican Republic and Italy. Appling's sports career was interrupted yet again in February 2020 when he was caught with 19 grams of heroin that police claimed he intended to sell. At the time, he was serving a four-year parole term for his previous criminal case. He was sentenced to 18 months of probation for the heroin charge. The wayward athlete landed in even more trouble in 2021 when he was accused of fatally shooting a 66-year-old Detroit man named Clyde Edmonds. According to news reports, Edmonds was married to the first cousin of Appling's mother. However, the circumstances surrounding the crime remain unclear to this day. Appling was charged with murder. His girlfriend, Natalie Bannister, faced lesser charges in connection with the case. Shortly before the case was slated to go to trial, Appling reached a deal with prosecutors. He pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and a gun charge. And as a result, he was sentenced to 18 to 40 years in prison. Bannister pleaded guilty to one count of lying to officers in exchange for having an accessory charge dropped. She was ultimately sentenced to a year and a half of probation. Number 5. Terence Williams Between 2009 and 2015, Terence Williams played for three NBA teams, the Houston Rockets, the Sacramento Kings, and the Boston Celtics. He also played internationally, but he never seemed to stick with a team for long. In many cases, he was waived before he played in a single game, and he left several teams after playing in just a few games. In October 2021, six years after he last played basketball professionally, Williams and 17 accused co-conspirators were indicted on federal charges for allegedly scamming the NBA's healthcare plan out of $4 million. According to prosecutors, the defendants carried out the fraud over four years with help from a dentist and several doctors who submitted fictitious claims for medical and dental expenses. Eighteen other NBA players were charged in connection with the scheme, including at least ten suspects who provided Williams with hundreds of thousands of dollars in kickbacks. Like Williams, many of these former players played for multiple teams but never achieved the large-scale success of some of basketball's bigger names. They still made plenty of money though, with their earnings from NBA games alone totaling $343 million. In most cases, a player's earnings should be enough to live on for a long time. But greed still took over, especially for Williams, who squandered the vast majority of his pro basketball earnings and has little to show for it. In 2023, Williams pleaded guilty to federal counts of conspiracy to commit healthcare fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and aggravated identity theft. While many of his co-accused managed to avoid jail time, he was ordered to serve 10 years in prison due to his role as the scheme's mastermind. During his sentencing hearing, Williams tearfully apologized for his behavior and its impact on his six children. He blamed greed, stupidity, and an opioid addiction for his crimes, but the judge offered a less compassionate take. They described Williams' behavior as extortionate and aggressive, speculating that he frittered away the money on stupid stuff. Former NBA players Keon Dooling and Alan Anderson also received prison time for their roles in the fraud scheme. Anderson allegedly submitted over $120,000 in fake claims and recruited new participants, generating more than $700,000 in false claims. As a consequence, he was sentenced to two years in prison. Dooling received $363,000 from fake claims while helping others file nearly $200,000 in bogus reimbursements. He was ordered to spend 30 months behind bars for his involvement. Number 4. Sebastian Telfair Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, Sebastian Telfair established himself as a basketball prodigy when he was still in high school. He skipped past the college stage of the sport and went straight into the NBA in 2004 when he signed on with the Portland Trailblazers. Telfair also played for the Minnesota Timberwolves, LA Clippers, Cleveland Cavaliers, Phoenix Suns, Oklahoma City Thunder and numerous international teams. The young superstar first encountered legal problems in 2008 when he was sentenced to three years of probation for a weapon possession charge. The 
this resulted in him being suspended for three games. Nine years later, in 2017, Telfair and a friend were caught with multiple guns during a routine traffic stop for a busted headlight and illegal parking. In addition to finding three loaded handguns, a semi-automatic rifle, and a bulletproof vest, officers discovered a large quantity of marijuana. At the time of the traffic stop, Telfair was only supposed to be in New York City for a few hours. He was in the process of moving and was scheduled to attend the opening of new basketball courts at his childhood apartment complex. However, he still somehow found time to get himself in trouble. In 2019, he was convicted of a felony weapons charge, landing him three and a half years in prison. Telfair was also one of the 18 former NBA players who were indicted on charges stemming from Terrence Williams' $4 million healthcare fraud scheme. Number 3. Sean Kemp while responding to a reported drive-by shooting outside a shopping mall in Tacoma, Washington in March 2023, police learned that the incident involved six-time NBA All-Star Sean Kemp. According to a law enforcement report, surveillance footage showed a silver Toyota SUV pulling into the mall parking lot. And a few minutes later, 53-year-old Kemp pulled up in his Porsche and exited the car. Kemp claimed that he tracked the location of his stolen cell phone to the SUV. He accused the driver of firing a gun at him as he approached the vehicle demanding his phone back, and this prompted him to shoot back in self-defense. A witness told officers that they saw Kemp throw a .357 caliber revolver into the bushes while fleeing the scene, which he later admitted to during questioning. Luckily though, nobody was hurt during the incident, and Kemp got his phone back. Kemp left the scene but later went to the police on his own accord after realizing he might be identified by his license plates. About a month after the incident, he was charged with first-degree assault, despite his insistence that he had shot the other driver in self-defense. Detectives disagreed, claiming that surveillance footage showed Kemp pulling his revolver out of his backpack the moment he exited his Porsche. They also accused Kemp of firing several shots at the SUV as the driver tried to escape. However, the driver's side door was lodged against the car next to it. The SUV driver could be seen exiting his vehicle with his hands up after failing to escape. And after a brief verbal exchange, the men went their separate ways. Kemp pleaded not guilty to the assault charge. But for now, the case appears to be ongoing. Number 2. Kevin Porter Jr. In September 2023, Houston Rockets guard Kevin Porter Jr. was arrested for allegedly attacking his girlfriend, former WNBA player Kaiser Gondesich, at a Manhattan hotel. The 26-year-old victim reportedly accused Porter of putting his hands around her neck and hitting her repeatedly shortly before 7 a.m. She was taken to a nearby hospital with a deep cut to her face. Gondesich later denied the version of events put forth by prosecutors, claiming they were trying to push a false narrative. She told the New York Post that the fight between her and Porter lasted less than 10 seconds. She claimed to have sustained some of her injuries from being startled awake and falling on her head as her boyfriend returned to the room from a night out. In early 2024, Porter reached a deal with prosecutors which enabled him to avoid jail time. He pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor assault charge and a harassment violation and was ordered to complete a 26-week abuse of partner intervention program. Porter is also required to attend all of his court dates and avoid any further trouble with the law to fulfill his obligations to the court. As long as he does everything he's supposed to do, the assault plea will be withdrawn and he will be sentenced to time served. The plea deal will spare Porter from a criminal record for the incident, but unfortunately for him, it did not spare his basketball career. After his arrest, the Rockets traded him to the Oklahoma City Thunder and he was immediately cut. He has not played for the NBA since, despite his lawyer's and girlfriend's insistence that the charges against him were false. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. Number one, Draymond Green. A history of unsportsmanlike behavior caught up with Golden State Warriors power forward Draymond Green in December 2023. The 33-year-old was suspended indefinitely for striking a member of a rival team during the game. The Warriors and the Phoenix Suns were in the third quarter when Green allegedly hit Sun center Yusuf Nurkic in the face. Green was taken off the court, marking his 18th time being ejected from a game in his career. 
He later told NBC Sports that it's not in his custom to apologize, but that he was making an exception in this instance because he did not mean to hurt Nurkic. While the incident did not sound like a big deal to Green, Nurkic seemed to take it a little more seriously. Speaking with reporters, he said that he does not know what's going on with Green. He followed that up by saying that it seems like he needs help. Nurkic further stated that he was glad that Green did not try to choke him. In a statement, the NBA said Green will need to meet certain league and team conditions before he will be allowed to play a game. Warriors coach Steve Kerr said that the team needs Green and that he needs to figure out a way to keep his poise so that he can be on the court for his teammates. Just months earlier, in April 2023, Green was kicked out of a game for allegedly stomping on the chest of Domantas Sabonis during a playoff game against the Sacramento Kings. And back in 2016, Green was fined $25,000 for kicking Oklahoma City center Steve Adams in the groin. As of February 2024, the indefinite suspension remains in effect. 10. Violence against the pregnant A football player for the Miami Hurricanes was arrested in 2021 after he beat a pregnant girlfriend. His name is Avante Williams and he was arrested in July on a single court of aggravated battery on a pregnant woman. According to the arrest report, officers with the Miami-Dade Police Department arrived at the apartment where Williams was living with his girlfriend. They'd been arguing because even though his girlfriend was pregnant with his child and they lived together, Williams was messing around with another woman. When confronted with his treachery, the football player kicked his pregnant girlfriend out of his apartment instead of owning up to what he did. At least he gave her the courtesy of packing some stuff up before she left. He went out for a bit, hoping that when he got back she would be gone. But when he returned, his girlfriend, a now ex-girlfriend, was still packing her items into boxes. He was so mad that he grabbed her by the hair and started throwing her around. He then dragged her outside and threw her on the ground, and that was when the neighbors called the cops. Williams was ranked the top safety in the 2020 class. But after he came to light what he'd done, UM's athletics department dismissed him from the football program. He was also suspended from all team activities. In other words, he can look forward to never being a sports star ever again. 9. Bad Volleyball Players Two women's volleyball players for FAU walked into a fitting room at Macy's retail store in Boca Raton back in 2017. According to the Boca Raton Police Department, when they entered the fitting room, their bags were pretty much empty, but when they walked out, their bags were practically bursting. Emily Heise and Corinne Varney were arrested by the police for shoplifting. They tried to get away with over $1,400 in women's activewear clothing, along with a few choice pieces of Calvin Klein. They were busted by the asset protection representative at the retail store, who found the two young girls incredibly suspicious. They were carrying bags that were too big, they were acting dodgy, and they were clearly stuffing clothes into their bags while in the fitting rooms. The young women were arrested and charged with grand theft, then kicked out of Macy's forever. But all these years later, the horrible mistake of shoplifting hasn't completely ruined their lives. In fact, it actually looks like getting caught helped to push the young women back on the right path. 8. Spitting on the fans UCLA basketball player Mac Etienne got in some big trouble in early 2022 for allegedly spitting on fans during a game. It's important to note that the fans were from the rival team, but it was still a pretty unsportsmanlike thing to do. It happened after his team lost to the University of Arizona at the McHale Center in Tugson. After he lost, as he was returning to the locker room, he started spitting on the fans. Then, once he was in the locker room, the university police officers detained him for assault with the intent to injure, provoke, or insult another person. He was arrested and taken away, though the police never put him in handcuffs. It's a weird situation and one that's still ongoing. As of right now, Mac has pleaded not guilty to what became a misdemeanor assault charge. The case will probably be going on for the better part of the rest of 2022. 7. The 2006 Murder of Brian Patter in 2021, an arrest was finally made in the case of Brian Patter, the murdered football player for the University of Miami. He was shot to death almost 15 years ago outside his apartment building in 2006. His murder had gone unsolved ever since. But now, 
police in Miami have finally confirmed that it was Rashawn Jones, Brian Patter's teammate from between 2004 to 2006, who did the killing. According to the detectives on the case, Brian, just 22 years old at the time and an NFL hopeful, was walking from his car to the staircase of his apartment building on November 7th. As he approached the building, he was shot in the back of the head. It was brutal, but at least he didn't feel any pain. There was no suffering or even fear. He was just walking, and then he wasn't alive any longer. After the murder, Brian's family was in disarray, especially because they had a pretty strong hunch that Rashawn Jones was responsible. But the police failed to put the evidence together that they needed to make an arrest. It took them a decade and a half to finally build up a case against him. The case basically consisted of phone records, a ping from a cell phone tower placing him at the scene of the homicide, and an eyewitness who identified Jones in a lineup. 6. A Homeless Man with a Knife Celia Barquin Arozamina was a star college golfer from Spain who met her untimely end while playing around near her campus in Iowa. It happened back in September of 2018. Celia was finishing her degree at Iowa State University and was one of the best golfers in school. She had been working toward joining the Pro Tour and was almost certainly guaranteed a spot. But on Monday morning, when she went to play her round alone, she ran into somebody she'd never expected. A homeless man had wandered onto the golf course with a knife. He stabbed Celia to death and then chucked her body in a pond. Her corpse was only discovered when another player found her abandoned golf bag and followed the trail of carnage. A man named Colin Daniel Richards, just 22, and already known to police for his history of violence, was arrested shortly after and charged with murder. According to investigators, Richards had an urge to kill a woman. That was his only motive. He'd wandered out from his homeless encampment near the golf course until he stumbled upon Celia just so happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. 5. Murder at a Gas Station A former football player for the University of Georgia has been charged for a brutal shooting death that happened in March of 2021. His name is Akil Nasir Crumpton, and he was the wide receiver for the Bulldogs in 2017 and 2018. But in 2022, he was arrested in Philadelphia for murdering a gas station clerk. Crompton walked into the gas station, dressed entirely in black and holding a handgun. He simply walked to the counter of the racetrack gas station near the outskirts of Watkinsville and shot 23-year-old Elijah Wood to death. It was cold-blooded murder. Sadly, this is a tragic example of a promising career going straight down the toilet. Crompton had earned himself All-State and All-Catholic honors while playing football at his high school. Then he played in college in California before being transferred over to Georgia. He remained relatively successful until 2021, at which point he dropped out and didn't graduate. After he left school, he became a murderer. We still don't know why he shot Elijah. He didn't even know him. Elijah was working graveyard shift by himself when Crumpton walked up and shot him for no reason. In the security footage, you can see him committing this crime walking back and forth a few times in the store, and then leaving without taking a single thing. It's been devastating for Elijah's family, especially since it all seems so pointless. 4. Basketball star turned murderer Tashawn Hightower was the two-lane college basketball star who turned into a murderer. The 22-year-old was arrested in April of 2020 on a homicide charge. Up until the murder, He'd been leading the green wave in scoring and had recently been declared for the NBA draft. But his dreams of stardom were shattered on April 8th when he got involved with a group of people who committed a homicide in Stockbridge, Georgia. The victim was Devonte Anthony Long, dead from gunshot wounds after he was caught in a violent confrontation. According to reports, Tashawn was with a group of six men, including his brother, when they confronted Devonte. Devonte had apparently pistol whipped one of Tashawn's friends, and the confrontation erupted in gunfire. It's unclear who exactly pulled the trigger, although Tashawn's lawyer claims it was his brother. Whatever the case, and whoever pulled that trigger, all six men were involved in the murder and they're all going down. 
Hightower was immediately let go from his team and skipped over for the NBA draft. He was just over one week away from getting into the NBA and blew it to commit a murder. 3. The Bizarre Story of Nigel Brannan Austin PA football player Nigel J. Ron Brannan was arrested on charges of aggravated assault after he slashed another player's neck during a fight over a room key. It happened on July 22, 2021. It was about 7 o'clock at night in the university landing apartments. The victim and the football player, who happened to be roommates, were looking around for Brannan's key. The key had seemingly got lost, and Brannan wouldn't let his roommate leave until it was found. This turned into a really violent argument, at which point Brannon pulled out a knife. When the man tried to leave the situation, Brannon slashed him across the neck and cut his wrist. Luckily, the victim was able to fight back, push Brannon out of his way and sprint out the door. About six minutes later, the victim flagged down a Clarksville police officer and reported what had happened. He required stitches to his neck and had to get the deep laceration on his left wrist sealed. When the police asked Branham what had happened, he said he was angry because he thought his roommate stole the key to his room. It proved to be a pretty terrible decision for Nigel. He was suspended from the team and things spiraled from there. Shortly after this incident, on November 1st, he was discovered dead in Oklahoma City. According to the police, he was inside a vehicle with a man named Paris Tolver conducting illegal activity. Something went wrong between the two men and Paris pulled out a gun and shot him. The ex-football player was killed, and Paris was booked on first-degree murder. Even though Nigel Brannan was clearly a troubled individual, this is still a tragic case. He was a rising football star with a promising future, and it all started spiraling down the drain the moment he let his anger get the better of him and picked up that knife. 2. An Unwanted Butt Slap Cleveland Brown wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. was issued an arrest warrant by the New Orleans police. It was following a post-game celebration after LSU won the NCAA Football Championship in 2020. It all started because a complaint came in that Beckham had behaved inappropriately at the celebration. He'd slapped a woman on her behind while inside the LSU locker room at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. It wasn't just any woman either, it was a police officer. The officer whirled around and confronted Beckham about his inappropriate touching, but he wasn't arrested at the time. She decided later to file a complaint and go through with the arrest. Beckham started at LSU before he was selected by the New York Giants and later traded to the Browns. The arrest warrant fiasco was actually retracted before he got charged with anything. He got away clean, but this should stand as a pretty good lesson not to slap a stranger's behind even in a locker room. 1. A Weapon on Campus A Georgia football player was arrested in November of 2021 on three felony charges related to property damage and carrying a weapon in a safety zone. His name is Nylon Green, and he was the freshman defensive tackle for the Bulldogs. He was in the national top 100 class in the 2021 signing class and had appeared in three games up until his arrest. Here's what he did, according to the University of Georgia Police Department report. Security and the university responded to a complaint just after 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, November 14th. A man was on campus with a gun, dry firing it in the direction of another man. Dry firing is when someone pulls the trigger but there are no bullets in the weapon. It's not technically firing the weapon, but it's still extremely frowned upon, especially on a school campus. When the university police showed up, they found the football player in possession of a BB gun. It wasn't quite as bad as a real gun, but still a weapon. They also discovered a second BB gun hiding in his dorm room. It was enough that the school officers wished to pursue criminal charges. Then, shortly after, in what appeared to be the result of a fit of rage, the police were called yet again. Nylon Green had smashed out some windows by shooting them with BB guns. Have you ever blown your chances at an amazing opportunity due to your poor decision making? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.